Hi welcome again. In this video I'm gonna talk about world partition and support in Unreal Engine 5 preview version. Here we have a landscape created using world partition. It's a small landscape but I want to test the world partition functionality. Right and let me go a little bit up. Now I can select individual items in my landscape and I can select them and I can have this world partition map over here. I can select everything and unload everything. So anyway I, I have some specific area over there but I can select everything and unload oh here i just load everything okay you get the idea so i can select a specific part of my landscape and work on that and compared to the unreal engine early access version this version quite polished and uh, it works really well i, I couldn't find any major bug uh, with this version and i'm really happy with that and also uh, rvt is working as expected here we have a landscape decal and it's expected as usually and here we have our rpt based road system and it, it works just fine all right uh, now uh, let's delete this landscape and try to create everything from scratch all right now i'm going to create a new level file new level here we have an option to create an empty open world level so that's a world partition level that we are creating so try to select this one and create now we have an empty uh, screen like this that's fine now you can add default lighting and atmosphere into this place but here with open land we have a simple blueprint called sun sky of content open land blueprints i can simply drag that into here now i have a simple sun and sky setup so we can start work on this and here uh, i select my sun sky Go to the details panel and search for world partition and here we have an option called is spatially loaded so i need to un uncheck that so if, if i check that it will try to load this actor based on the position so if my landscape streaming proxies are loaded then uh, it will try to load this uh, sun sky actor otherwise it won't try to load it if this is not bound to a specific place and try to uncheck this checkbox and that's the uh, the first thing you need to think about all right i'm gonna save this level all right, i'm gonna over overwrite my main level that i showed you earlier all right then let's try to create a new landscape i'm gonna select the landscape mode now i'm gonna import a height map you can use any sort of height map but uh, in this case i'll try to include this height map on the on this video and try to check the description to get this height map if, if you need and here we have some settings as usual like components and so on but now we have uh, something specific called world partition grid size and that's something we need to think about so let me put this back to one now you can see i have this individual uh, segments so those are uh, the uh, components in my landscape so we have 16 by 16 uh, components now if i put four over here then it will create a yellow box uh, surrounded by four by four uh, components in my uh, landscape and this single uh, yellow a box is called a streaming proxy with this number we can control how many uh, streaming proxies we need in my landscape if i put two it will try to create a streaming proxy combining two by two components in this case i'll go with uh, four by four components and it's totally up to you to segment this based on your landscape and how large it is and how quickly you want to load things and so on now it's really important and try to create your material landscape material at this stage otherwise it will be a little bit harder to add that so because you need to add this uh, landscape for individual uh, streaming proxies and that's uh, quite hard and takes some time now i'm gonna hit uh, import here i'm using the open land as my landscape material but of course you can use anything you want then i'm gonna go to my paint section and uh, from the first layer i'm gonna select uh, layer info then it will add the correct auto layer and everything looks nice now i'm gonna select this uh, landscape level now i'm gonna close this landscape mode back into select mode as i mentioned earlier i can uh, select individual items in my landscape so these are streaming proxies you can see over here i can select them and so this one is selected right now we have this well partition tab so you can get this window if you don't have go to window and uh, well partition i guess right now there is nothing in this window so that's fine i'm gonna save this level and then i'm gonna reopen this map then i have some content over there now i can select uh, somewhere over here then i can right click and load select the cells then it will try to load pro streaming proxies covering this whole uh, area then i then if i want more part of my landscape i can select over here or select the cells it will be over somewhere here i can right click and go to that place 
using the move camera here and then I can go down and simply access my landscape and do anything that I like. All right, now we know how to load our landscape in the editor, but uh, how can we load them inside the runtime? If I go to my editor and there's nothing loaded in this area, but then if I play my game, this part is already loaded. So what's going on? So here in the runtime, we have a different way to load my level. So let me show you. In this case, I'm gonna load all my landscape just to show you this thing. I'm gonna go a little bit up like this and then open the world settings tab. If you don't see this tab, go to window and enable the world settings tab. And here search for runtime hash, right? Then you will have an option like this and uh, expand that again. And we have something called preview grid, right? So then you will see some sort of like a white square block over here. And this is my loading area. I can change it from here. I can expand this grid section. And here we have the loading range. I can increase this. Also, I can increase the cell size like this or reduce that. I don't exactly know the meaning of the cell size. I mean, it, it will affect the shape for sure, but there might be some performance impacts as well. Yeah, I don't know if you know what this cell size does try to uh, help us. If we, if we set a really a small loading range like this, then if I play my level, I can see there are some empty parts in my landscape like this in the middle. As I walk towards that place, it will try to load this specific area like this and right now with this uh, Unreal Engine preview version it will load quite faster and there is no blockage when when the specific part is loading and there's a nice improvement over the early access version now let's try to add some uh, basic landscape functionality to whether they are working or not and let's try to add some grass here with open land we have the grass on content open land grass then I'm gonna open this gt underscore ground uh, this is the grass type file in open land then I can add a simple grass like this and this grass is coming from open land grass uh, so you can use any sort of grass just to, I'm just trying out this functionality right okay it seems like everything works as expected I have some grass yep uh, looking great and yeah they're loading as expected now let's try to enable RPT support based on that we can do very interesting landscape blends also we can add some decal functionality landscape decals or we can print roads into landscape and we can do really interesting things so in order to enable virtual texturing first I'm going to edit project settings and I'm gonna search for virtual and here we have a checkbox called enable virtual texture support then I'm gonna restart my project save the current level Right now we have my level. I'm gonna enable the RVT support. Here I'm using OpenLens RVT uh, tools to enable the RVT functionality quickly. And the reason why we are doing is here I'm not trying to show you how to use RVT and there are so many videos available on YouTube. But here I'm trying to see whether how the RVT functionality is working and I'm gonna show you how, how, it, how it works. Right then uh, I'm gonna open my uh, OpenLen directory. And here we have a widget directory and here we have a RVT widget. I'm gonna right click and run edit utility widget then i'm gonna hit this add rvt support button and then i'm gonna dock this somewhere over here then i'm gonna select the world outline and here we have a rvt volume height go to the details panel and here we have virtual texture i'm gonna select the height texture and now we have the material volume i'm gonna select the material virtual texture right now we have added the basic rvt support now i'm gonna load the rvt cache mode on my landscape so basically we here we are using rvt as a cache i'm gonna select my landscape open the landscape material and then i'm gonna search for rvt here i'm gonna click this i uh, use rvt cache button now i'm using the rvt uh, texture it's a cache version i can play my game and uh, yep everything looks great then i'm gonna play my game here you can see there are some uh, issues like uh, this part of my uh, landscape is not loaded using rpt but if i walk over here it seems like it's loading and this is a kind of bug it, it asked me to build some grass maybe if i did that it, it will work uh, but it's just fine compared with the previous version because in the previous early access version rvt support is quite unstable since now we have the rvt cache mode i can do very interesting things for example here we have the open land decals uh, landscape decals i can drag this landscape decal and here you can see some uh, we are printing some things but now the 
the grass is coming out of this decal but we can easily fix that by adding some open land grass blueprint manager here i'm just using some of the open land, open land grass blueprints i'm gonna drag this uh, grass manager blueprint and uh, from the details panel i'm gonna select high grass intensity to one right now we have this decal printed to my landscape so basically something like this so here we can easily change any texture and we can do really interesting things i i have a separate video on this and try to check that one let's try to add some rvt based roads then again go to the open land blueprints roads i'm gonna drag this rvt road spline to my landscape yeah uh, roads are also working uh, just fine and there is one thing you need to think about here when you're creating a road sometimes this road could go through of your landscape so then it will cover a lot of uh, streaming proxies in that case you don't need to bound this road system uh, to a specific location so you can uh, in this case you can select this spline or the actor from the world outline and from the uh, details panel search for world partition and here uncheck this is spatially loaded so now it will try to load this uh, actor always and and that's exactly you want to do specifically for roads but for a decal like this you don't need that functionality it's just fine to load that along with the landscape streaming proxy all right in the next tutorial not exactly the next one i'm trying to import a large landscape that i created using houdini and i'm trying to import into Unreal engine 5 using world partition and i want to know how it works and a lot of things uh, in that area and uh, this is it for today and uh, see you soon with something interesting bye